It is time again for a new video with the pike. After I have presented the basic movement patterns and guards in the past videos about this wonderful weapon, created some context on how this weapon behaves against shorter ones and then also presented the thrust in more detail, we will now deal with the actual fencing or rather the behavior from the guards. And in addition, I will go here and there, also in future videos, into certain technical concepts which have their corresponding origin from certain guards. In this video we will talk about two guards. The upper guard and the lower guard. And in addition, the winding and the feeling in the bind. But please remember one thing above all. I will only describe examples from Joachim Meyer's book from 5070 that he kindly left for us. Of course. There are many more actions that can be taken from these two guards. A complete overview will only emerge when we have worked our way through all the guards to recognize and understand the big picture at the end. But already now we should not forget the past videos. Just the presentation of the thrusts of a past video already shows us the basic knowledge for the guards I will show you today. But now let's turn our attention to new techniques and start with the lower guard. Here we hold the pike low on the front knee of the left leg. The technique presented here from the book shows a very simple reaction to a thrust aimed at us. As soon as our opponent attacks us, we move or wind the incoming thrust out and then push our own pike to the target. That's simple and effective. As we have already learned from previous videos, we move back into the upper guard after a thrust from the lower one. This technique can be done on both sides. Now we continue with the upper guard. The first example shows an approach when our opponent does not want to attack. Here we go forward, raise our front foot and raise our pike. This may encourage our opponent to stab at us. And when this happens, we drop our pike on the top of the opponent's pike to push and to damp the incoming attack. And afterwards, we have free way to thrust. Now it gets a bit wild. If our opponent attacks on his own, we shoot our pike with one hand step out of the line of the opponent's attack, that's very important, and ideally hit the opponent with our point. Be careful not to swing up too much so you don't step over the opponent. We've already seen a lot of examples with one-handed thrusts in previous videos. More examples are not given in Meyer's instructions for the moment, at least not in this book from 5070. The following in passages before moving on to the next guard are about feeling and the pressure and the binding, resulting in some nice winds and changings. First I show you how to get a clear line of attack by giving an impulse to the other pike. Easy as that. And a new example, we fake a change through which is followed by the opponent and change through a second time. Again, we get a clear path to thrust. And all of this works from both sides. If someone tries to overcome us with changings, we press directly into that change and taking out the movement of the opponent. But we can also push out counter movements if we have changed by ourselves. We remember that when engaging another pikeman, it's all about skillfully finding a way past his pike. A good measure of sensitivity, skill and care are very important here. So that's it for now. In the next video we dedicate ourselves to the three remaining guards. Possibly it were also two videos. But that was not all, because more will follow with all kinds of rules and counters. 
So stay tuned, we will also master the pike together. See you soon.